Hello, I'm Lee Sass, and this is Talisman the Digital Edition, publishing your board game. Now been digitised to make it available to a wider audience. Uh, back from the think the 19, early 1980s, the original original came out, which I very vaguely remember playing, and uh, came out in several other instances since then. Finally, has been digitised, and uh, I saw I saw Variax playing this with a couple of chums online, and I thought it looked quite interesting, and grabbed it over Christmas in one of the Steam sales. I uh, played a few games with uh, uh, myself against the the AI and, and with with the kids as well. Mostly Mario Super Mouse, so I thought you might like seeing uh, seeing me play a game or two with it. Well, what, what's the purpose of the game? It, it's uh, you're obviously from the name you're looking for one of the fabled talismans. You're one of four characters traveling around a board. Each board has a space in which you can draw cards, which which uh, cause creatures or objects or events to appear. Uh, and each character has stats, and you try to build your stats and once you one of the Tasmans, try to head towards the centre and thereby win your way to the, the Crown of Conquest, which once you have it, will allow you to dominate all other creatures in the land. And the easiest way, I think, to, to show you how to play it is just to get in there with a new game. I've played it, I've played it on one quite a few times, but we're, we're not going to use the monk this time. I try to use a new character each time. But if I click on a character here, I will show you give you an idea of some of the stats. I'll show you the warrior first, he's one of the standard creatures. Often one of the ones people play first. There we go. So every character has a collection of, uh, of similar stats. So there's also this strength, which is your standard combat stat. So in competing with other characters or creatures in, in the game, you might have a, to go to combat with them, which takes my place by simply rolling a six of dice, adding your strength, and then the opponent does the same, and whoever has the highest value wins wins that battle and then it sometimes causes the other opponent to lose a life in uh, the person who's losing or when you're competing against other characters they might start to steal something instead similar to that we have craft which is a bit like magic uh, generally poor old warrior here he's only got a craft of two because you know, it's not really his uh, his, uh, his key stat is it really someone like the the priest it's got a higher craft of four, and the wizard also up to five. Uh, you, you can have magical combats in much the way you can in a normal combat. For example, especially something incorporeal like a ghost, it's not going to do much good hitting it. But you can you can create you can uh, be involved in psychic or magical combat with these creatures, and some of the characters can also initiate psychic combat themselves. Which case, poor Mr. Warrior probably won't do too well. We have lives, which is very self-explanatory. You lose lives by taking taking injuries, either from combat or other events in the game. Get out of zero and your your character of course dies. But early in the game you can you can you're, you can come back with a new character and uh, it doesn't preclude you from winning the game by any means. The game is much of a much a, a swings and roundabouts when it comes to how well you might be doing. It's a very there's lots of random factors in the game. Um, beyond lives you have fate, which is a way of re rolling unfavourable dice rolls. Uh, again, the poor warrior only has a, a fate of one, but other creatures, again, like the priest, has a rate, rate, uh, 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 a fate of five. And you can increase all these stats within the game, but uh, your base values are obviously quite important as well. Uh, so we have gold. Um, gold is used to buy items, obviously. Bribes, healing yourself, and uh, one gold won't sound very much, but then the most expensive item in the game is only about four gold. And uh, even then, because of the randomness of the game, sometimes you'll find you'll have a character who's swimming in gold, and other times you'll be you'll be struggling to find an extra one that you need. But one gold from this most most characters start out with. Lastly, we have alignment. The uh, the alignment's a bit, a bit interesting. I mean, you've got gold, you've got good, evil, and neutral, and that doesn't prevent you in behaving in a, a particular way. So, I've played games with all four good creatures before now, and they've just been just as horrible to each other as. As, uh, as evil creatures might. It's more to do with what happens on certain squares and cards that are revealed. Being a good character might give you a, a fable or unfable result on a, on a particular square and vice versa for evil. Neutral, like the warrior here, he starts up as neutral, tends to have nothing good or bad either way. Um, again, this can change vastly during the game, so <laughs> I think you can set some game rules where, you, where uh, good creatures maybe can't fight each other, but in a general game that's the only real effect is, is the effect of different uh, squares and cards on uh, based on your alignment. 
every character also has a special ability. Just, we won't look at all through them all, just look at the special the warriors one for now to give you an idea. You may roll two dice in battle and use the higher attack roll to determine your attack score. So this refers to what I said about competing on a strength-based combat. So you usually roll one dice and you add your strength. In the warrior's case, because of his martial prowess, he can he can roll two dice and choose one of them, choose the better score, to give him a greater chance of, of being successful in battle. Also, he may use two weapons at the same time. You'll find weapons and various other things throughout the game, and generally, if you've got a got two weapons, you'll have to choose which one you're going to use before a combat. The warrior can use two, again, giving him a boost. Despite this, I've not had a lot of success with <laughs> using the warrior to have one with him at all yet, despite all these wonderful sounding uh, combat stats, but I've won with quite a few of the others. And uh, but I'm not going to choose any of these today. I want to pick possibly a slightly more difficult character to use. I don't know because I've never used them. the minstrel. So in comparison with the warrior, not very strong. Craft, not great lives. You have a good good fate value and a, and a standard gold value. Special ability: though. animals and dragons will not attack you, although you may choose to attack them. If you don't attack an animal, you may attempt to charm it. To do so, roll one dice. If you roll higher than the animal strength, it joins you as a follower, as it strength yours in battle. I'll, I'll talk about followers later. But essentially, it's a chance to to improve your your strength value in a battle based on the creature's strength. You may use only one charm to enter a battle. You may also take the maiden and the princess. Many character you land on. These are these are just, maiden and the princess are both followers that you can find in the game. And the minstrel, being a charming sort of chap, uh, has a chance to steal. Steal those followers away from other characters. So I'm going to use the minstrel. I don't worry if some of this seems a little bit, you know, confusing. You're not quite sure what's going on. I'll explain it all as we go along. Lastly, rune stones. Let's pick some rune stones. These are these are rewards you get uh, based on how well you do in a game. So as you go up levels, you get potential gifts that you can grab. So I'm to make things a little easier for myself. I'm going to grab a couple of these, and I'm going to pick. Um, See. I'm going to improve my chances to learn to improve my strength and my, my craft. Again, I'll talk about these later. And I'll increase my overall strength as well. Okay. Now the the AI is going to be random. It's sort of nice if they're uh, if they're all different, but it's, unfortunately I found recently that some of these are duplicates of each other. We'll, we'll see how we get along. It'd be nice to have three random characters. Experience three different ones. Uh, I can't pick completely random characters unfortunately because it will it will ran it won't let me choose which character to play as. Just going to check on here. I've I've preset some rules on here. Let's just get in there and see. Yes, that's fine. The previous. Go on, Mister. So we'll let we'll let the the creatures. The other characters draw their spells, and I'll have a quick discussion about the board. So here's the board. You have three concentric circles at the board. Middle region, inner region. Generally speaking, at the start, you spend most of your time in the outer region, running around, experiencing these different squares. Let's zoom in a second. There's a typical square. This is where we're starting, over here in the uh, in the tavern. There's another square here, another square here. We'll move around the board um, by rolling the dice. After a while, when you feel a bit, a bit stronger, you might venture into the inner regions. This is not necessarily that easy to do. There's a river cutting off uh, access to the to the middle region. You either pass through this chap here, who's the guardian, who's uh, the guardian, but the wrong man, the sentinel. Sorry, it's quite difficult to fight. Or you can verse but the methods of teleports. You might ship you across the river. Um, but anyway, you can you can find various ways to get into the center. Once you get into the center, into the center here, you get to the very very center indeed. By passing through this portal here, but we can worry about that until a bit later. That's a bit further into the game. So right now we have all the other caps on the board. We have um, we have us uh, down over the tavern. We have the elf as his own starting point. So a quick look at the characters and see what they're like. So we have the elf. Um, special abilities. You know, not uh, the basic stats. He's a, that's probably a little bit better than ours. A bit more strength maybe. Elf, you do not to roll the dice in the forest unless you wish to. If you wish to roll, you may accept the result. The forest is one of the squares on the board, and various bad things can happen in there. It's very strange here. It appears that he already has runestones. I was expecting that. It appears that he has the runestones. I've played as the elf previously. 
I wasn't expecting this. It appears that the elf has um, has runestones preset on him. This is not a good thing. I don't really want to have the uh, the elf have runestones, but never mind. My mistake. We'll see how it goes. Um, so when you're in the woods, you can evade creatures. That means you'd have to have a fight if you don't want to. And you can also travel from place to place very easily. So these squares here are woods, and the elf could easily hop from square to square without rolling the dice to get around the board. It also starts in the forest over here. We have the priest. Hasn't got any runes though, so I haven't played as the priest before. His special ability, so he has one spell. There are spells in the game, we can all earn spells, but he's as a slightly magical creature, he starts with a spell. Um, when he's praying in some of the different uh, places, he can he can add one to the score to improve the chances of what he gets come out. And also, if he's fighting fighting creatures such as ghosts and spirits, he can simply destroy them in, in, in combat. Um, we talk about trophies here, we'll talk about that a bit later, but essentially it's a, it's a quick way to destroy anything, but you get less one less benefit out of it. But you do gain a spell if he destroys creatures in that way, so it can be useful sometimes if he's in a hard quest situation. Uh, also, he may not use any weapons during battle, so a slight restriction over here. The assassin, unfortunately, is going to have some runestones, because I've played as the assassin before. It's a very powerful creature, but I'm a bit worried about this character indeed, all for the start. So, the powers for the assassin. Special abilities. You may assassinate when you attack any creature or, or a character or creature. So, what this basically means is, if he was in a combat with me, normally, in a normal combat, I roll a dice and add my strength. He rolls a dice and add his strength. And when he assassinates, I don't get to roll a dice. Which means that, if my, unless my strength is much higher than his, there's a good chance he's going to do me an injury. Okay? So that's what assassinating means. The only negative about this is that for him is that if he wants to assassinate me, all he can do is take away one of my knights. Whereas in a normal combat, if you kill, if you in, if you win a battle against another character, you may take one of their items instead, such as a piece of gold or one piece of equipment. So it's uh, he is very powerful in combat, but he has some restrictions there as well. And by the way, I'm a good creature. The elf's good, the priest is good, and the assassin is evil. So let's get in there and see what happens. So I'll roll one dice. Let's say one moves. Now I can only move to one of these two squares here. And if I look at the squares for a start, we have planes over here, and we have fields. Now both of these, the only result of landing in these uh, in these areas is I draw a card from the adventure back up here, which could be a creature, it could be a piece of equipment, it could be various different things that will turn up. Um, different spaces in the boards will do different things, but let's just try. it doesn't really matter which way I want to go particularly. Let's just go down here. And the square, drawn an adventure card. Oh, and I found an axe. Very nice. Add one strength to in battle. And if I'm in the woods of the forest, I may build a raft. So this is one way that I can get into the inner area. If I was to stand in one of these squares here, I could spend I could build a raft and then spend the next round, instead of moving around, I could simply hop across the river with my raft and then travel around the center. And I can use it in combat as well, so it's a very useful item. This is what the elf's going to do. Roll his dice, and he's going to move two squares to the ruins. Now this is a card. This is a place where you draw two cards instead of one. He's going to. He's now in combat with an ogre. He has strength three. He's rolled a six. There goes strength five. Rolled a seven. So in this case, the elf has been very lucky, since he was initially weaker than the ogre, and he has killed the ogre. And now he's killed the ogre. He can take the sword, which was the other card. As far as it is. The elf's off to a good start. The priest, and of course the mystic. Um, there are various different things you can do in the uh, in the village over here. You can go to the blacksmith, you can go to the healer, and you can go to the mystic. In this case, he went to the mystic and got a random result of um, getting a spell. He now has two spells, which is this two number number two in the blue square over here. The assassin has moved around. He's found the hermit. The hermit is going to appear in the plane of peril. So the, the um, a lot of happened there in a few seconds, but I'll just cover them quickly. So um, when you land on squares like that, like the Mystic, there are a number of different results you can get. Usually you roll the dice, and there are there are at least one or more negative results you can get, and then a, uh, one or one or more uh, positive results you can get, depending on which square you, which um, what sort of square you're landing on. Uh, the priest was lucky; he gained a spell. 
Then the assassin moved around and, added, and drew a card, and that drew out the hermit. And the hermit is important because it's one of the, she is one of the ways of gaining an amulet. All someone needs to do is get to this square here, and they will be given an amulet, which will enable to travel to this square here and up to the crown of conquest at the top. You cannot pass through this area here without having an amulet. When you have one, it will be marked in one of these squares. These are circles over here. Okay. Now. The problem with this is where the hermit will appear in a random location, and she has only appeared in one of the most inaccessible regions you can get to. So we will, we will see. It'll be quite a long time before anyone passes through, passes through the portal of power to, to get this. Never mind. Let's get on with the game. And I'll move to three, so I can go here. I go here. This is the forest. Now, there's uh, when you land here, there's a, there's a random. You, know, you roll a dice to see a random effect. You can be attacked by a brigand. You could be lost for a while losing a turn, you could be safe from your rage could be ideal. I don't really want to risk that. So I'm gonna go to the woods over here instead and draw a card. Fingers crossed, I found a bag of gold, so I now have two bags of gold. Let's see what the uh, the elf's going to do. They don't come and fight me. He is he's gonna fight me, so he had a choice there to either come and visit the square and draw a card, or come and fight me. He's got a strength of three. He's got a sword, so he's got a mod got a plus one in combat, and he rolled a one, which is not a good score for him. I've got three and a one. Well, I've got to modify one for my axe. And I scored a score of seven. Now at this point here, he still thinks he's got good odds of beating me, so he spends one of his fate points to re-roll dice. But unfortunately, he re-rolled badly, and he's still got a lower score than me. So I win. To continue, now I've got a choice here. I can take one of his lives, I can take his sword, I can take his bag of gold. I can only use one weapon at a time. But do I want to I could even weaken him by taking a sword I don't really need? I'm gonna take the sword, because there is a chance for me to turn this into gold later on. So to to, to inconvenience him and to uh, and to give me a chance of still getting some gold, I'm gonna do that. The priest, what are you gonna do, priest? Priest is going to go to the ruins and draw two cards. A pixie, which is a follower, and a potion of strength, which is a magic object. Okay. Let's have a look at that for a second. So, let's look at, so over here, every character has a little list of cards here. You have your spells, your objects, we're carrying one object, you have your followers, and your trophies. So, the priest there got very lucky, he found a follower, it's called the pixie. Are you going to show me what the pixie does? Why well, are you not showing me, game? That's a bit strange. Ah, potion of strength. So the object here, the potion of strength. You can drink the potion of strength just before combat, before you start rolling dice, and it will make will make you uh, your strength two points higher, which is rather nice. That'll help him as he's got quite a low strength to start with. If we look at the uh, okay, being very laggy here. What's wrong with you? Let's look at the follower, the pixie. So the pixie. Um, you don't need to roll the, in the for, roll the dice in the forest, which is here, unless you wish to. So this has given him, this follow has given the priest the powers that the elf already has. Which is really, and also the ability to evade creatures in the woods, just like the, the elf has. So very useful follow indeed. You can lose followers, but for now, that's going to help him a great deal. Especially in avoiding combat that you might get involved. The assassin is going to move and draw a card. A shadow. So this is a character that is a, is a craft combat. This is a, rather than a strength, this is, a, this is a, more like a magical combat. Thankfully the shadow is a fairly weak creature, and the assassin quickly really dispatches it. Actually, I tell a lie. I was wrong. They, they both scored the same number. The assassin didn't lose. They, they, they rolled the same number. I misread that there. So the shadow remains here. The shadow is still lurking around. And the next person to land here, if they decide to encounter this space, will have to fight that creature there. Where are we going to go to? Both of these squares are the same, essentially they are going to be, they are, um, it's going to draw a card. But I think I'm going to go, let's see which way should I go, I'll go this way. There's no card, many cards on the board, so it doesn't really make a lot of difference. What I do this way. Wow. <laughs> so you can simply find talismans as well, they're simply one of the cards you can draw out. So I already have a talisman. The chances of me keeping that, and not losing it at some point, are fairly low. 
I also have another problem. Oh, the elf is skipping straight to here, and he's picked up a poltergeist. This is not a nice fault. So he's very, very unlucky here. Some followers are negative. So the poltergeist, in front of the poltergeist, is that uh, you cannot not take it as a follower. And it, now it's going to slow his movement down to one square per turn. He will never be rolling the dice, he'll just be moving one square at a time. He can get rid of it fairly easily, thankfully. All he needs to do is cross a river. There's a river here and there's a river down here. So all he needs to do is take two turns to get over here and the follower from the, uh, the poltergeist will vanish. But in the meantime, at least it slowed him down. Priest is going to fight me. Oh, I see. Because you've got your potion of strength, you think you can take me on. I see. You want my talisman, don't you? Well, I, I've got a choice now. I'm going to use one weapon, so I might as well use the axe. Here he goes. Fingers crossed. That's a low roll for him, and an okay roll for me. Is he going to re-roll? I guess he didn't. He would have been given the chance to re-roll first. He's got plenty of fate to do it. To do it. He's got five fate. As do I. But I'm going to assume that he's not going to do anything. Now what do I take? Do I take, do I take his life or do I take a, I'll take a bag of gold. Let's take some gold. I'm doing quite well so far. The assassin. I wouldn't do so well against him. He's going to beat up... No, I thought he's going to beat up the elf. No, he's going to encounter a bear. So this is probably where he's going to use his, his assassinate. So in that case there, the, the bear had a strength of 3, the assassin had a strength of 3, and because he was a, the assassin was assassina assassinating the bear, the bear didn't get to roll the dice, which meant it was no way for the bear to get a score higher than uh, what the uh, assassin could roll as a minimum of 4, so he also kills him. This is why the assassin is so deadly, it kills uh, creatures very, very easily. 